Hello, outlets, and Hello. welcome to another episode of Shameless Plugs. Uh, I am J.A. George, and I am joined, as always, by... Samantha the Trainer! Yes. All right, yes. We've, we've got a special episode for you today. Not, not what we normally say we have a special episode, it means there's a guest. We do have a guest, but it's not an interview episode yeah. this time. I mean, so we're not as excited. Yes, we are. Oh, we're excited! God! <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my we're... god, apologies to Ryan Leslie right off the bat, who's going to be no, doing... <laughs> that's not what I meant. I meant, we're just, you know, we're a different emotion besides excited. Like, ex we're excited. Excitedness. We're excited. That's a word. It's a different emotion. So anyway, it's a shameless story time. <laughs> New stories today from uh, yours truly, Samantha the writer as well, and one of our favorites... Ryan Leslie. Hi, Ryan Leslie. <laughs> we'll be reading her story, Pain. Yes. So, uh, without further ado, yeah. are we ready to go? I think so. Go for it. All right. Uh, I'm going to read my story first. This is called Bump in the Night. Could you please slow down, Emma asked. The light from the dashboard console colored Mark's skin seasick and deepened the wrinkles around his eyes until they were more like scars. He didn't look anything like her, Mark. She turned away from him, to the woods rushing past the passenger window. The upper branches were too thick, too tangled, for light to penetrate, so the saplings on the forest floor never stood a chance. They'd petrified into grotesque deformities, withered arms forcing their way out of the grave. Mark kept his eyes on the road. Gotta stay out of the storm. The headlights couldn't keep pace. How could he see anything? We won't have to worry about the storm if you manage to kill us first. He turned to face her. Last I checked, I've been driving for aught 20, but by the time she saw it, it was too late to scream. The right headlight died with the sharp snap of shattering glass. The countryside crept closer. Their vehicle tilted at an obscene angle, threatening to tip. Em Emma's fingers bored into the armrest resistant leather. The seat belt bit into her sternum. She prayed for their safety, for the safety of whatever they'd hit. Tires shrieked as they skidded sideways, trying to cling to the asphalt. Finally, mercifully, they came to a stop, her skull colliding with the indifferent window. Emma swiveled in her seat. The engineers hadn't reached this sector of the reclamation project yet, so there were no lamps offering assistance as she squinted behind them, praying to make out some piece of inanimate debris, or even an injured but living limp victim limping away. But the blackness refused to be pierced. Between all the rain and the month-long stretches where the sun didn't bother to come up, it was like even God didn't want to see this place. She couldn't blame him. You okay? Mark asked. Emma did her best to keep her voice and volume level. My husband refuses to listen to anyone and almost got me killed. We just ran over something, and we're probably about to freeze to death in an ice storm because of it. And on top of all that, I'm a million miles from everyone I love. What scenario can you possibly imagine where I'm okay? Mark closed his eyes. His voice dropped to just above his whisper. His drawl forced its way to the surface, belying his anger. You're the one who pushed us out here. She smelled the sugary note on his breath, mixed with alcohol's tang. She turned away before she spoke. It was an opportunity. We had to jump on it to get you noticed. You wanted to get me away from Tanya. Don't pretend it was anything else. Emma didn't bother checking her volume any longer. She was using you! I never touched her. I, Emma continued over the interruption. And sooner or later, you would have taken a few swigs from that flask and done something stupid like you always do when you drink. Just like tonight. Mark's eyes snapped open and focused on her. Silently, he hurled the door open and invited the night in. Emma let her head sink into the seat back and then, with a groan, reached up to her throbbing forehead. Her fingers came away sticky. An oozing gash awaited in the mirror. Even without the injury, the woman who stared back at her, the one competing with tramps like Tanya, wasn't half the woman who had married Mark. The engine was still running, <clears throat> and the dashboard bell chimed at Emma, relentless. She followed him outside. The storm's front jostled the trees. The little petrified ones scraped against one another like waves of corpse arms tearing at each other for the first taste. In the taillight's crimson glow, 
she made out a fresh smear on the ground behind them. Thicker than the enveloping woods. Darker. Could blood even get that dark? There was no body, and no amount of squinting was going to penetrate the shroud covering the road behind them. They saw nothing. But somewhere from the watching blackness, a voice rumbled like Revelation's seven thunders, and Mark and Emma heard their victim growl. That's it. I wow. Call, I call that my movie trailer story. Nice. That does sound like a movie trailer. Yikes. Wow. Well, so there it is. Nice. There's my story. Bump of the night. Hope you liked it. Links, it's up on my website now. Um, we'll have the link on um, on the Shameless Plugs mm-hmm. podcast site. Yeah. And uh, with that, I think we'll turn it over to Ryan. Yep. Reading Pain. Yes. Ryan Leslie reading Pain. Hey, this is Ryan Leslie, and this is my poem, Pain. Warning, there are trigger warnings with this. What is pain exactly? How would you define it? Is it physical to you? You trip and go down on your knees, scraping your skin. Is it that strange burn when your skin disappears, revealing that red, sometimes bloody layer underneath? Have you ever stepped on a Lego? All of a sudden, you go down and thinking, Jesus Christ, this is it. Fucking Legos. What about tripping up the stairs or slipping in the shower, dropping your phone on your face? I always feel stupid after that one. What about when you accidentally stub your toe? That bright burst of pain that makes you breathless right before your vocabulary becomes colorful in a way only pain can bring out. How about scalding your tongue on hot cocoa? Because it's always hot cocoa. That odd moment when you accidentally swallow the wrong way, suddenly you can't breathe. God, that fucking annoys me. How can it go down the wrong way? What about biting your tongue or the side of your mouth? This always humbles me. There you are, chewing like a boss, and all of a sudden, your teeth become dangerous. You taste blood and freeze. So now you're sitting there all vulnerable. What about a cut along your skin? Was it accident or self-inflicted? Because the pain is different with each. One happens when you're not paying attention. The other happens when you're paying too much attention. What about a hit or a punch that slams into your body, leaving behind a bruise or wound? One bleeds inside while the other bleeds outside. Or maybe pain is emotional for you. Do you feel guilty or ashamed? Do you have a secret? A secret that eats away at you? One that you can feel can never be revealed? Do you have a longing, maybe for something that's not real or something that's not yours? A desire for something that is forbidden or wrong, whether by society standards or your own? Do you think it's a raging desire to not feel, to not fucking care anymore? Do you think about your death like another would think about their life? Do you long for death? Thinking it would solve everything when, in reality, you know, you fucking know that it will only cause more pain to the ones you leave shattered behind you. Because trust me, it will shatter them. Not that that makes it any easier for you, but the pain you give them will be even heavier than the pain you were so desperate to leave behind. Is this pain to you? Or maybe... Maybe it's loneliness. The pain of the lonely is terrible. You battle depression. Just like an alcoholic battles the bottle while they're fighting not to take that drink. You're finding those hateful voices in your mind telling you you deserve this, this pain, that you're unwanted, that you're unloved. Those voices, that, that is fucking pain. Do you feel like you're never good enough? That you will never be good enough? Is your heart broken or empty? Are you feeling a loss that cannot be recovered? Of a loved one, a relationship, a loss that fills your breath as easy as it fills your tears. Have you ever heard the saying, time heals all wounds? Ah, that pissed me off. Because it's a fucking lie. Time does not heal all wounds. It only makes it more tolerable, more acceptable. As time goes on, the pain becomes your reality. The reality becomes normal. It's still fucking there, causing an ache deep down inside you in a lonely place that can never be touched. What the fuck is pain? Why? Why do we have to bear it? Why is everyone's pain different? Are we being punished for something? I mean, why do some people lead seemingly golden lives while others are forever caught in the shadows? Where's the justice, the understanding, the goddamn love? Why do people revere the wicked, the false, while at the same time turn a blind eye to the neglected, the shamed? Because, well, because it's easier to just not get involved, right, than it is to actually give a shit. If you don't make eye contact, you're not responsible. It's not your fault that guy is homeless all because he got caught up on meth or that girl that's standing on the street corner offering whatever she can so she can get her fixed. You know what? They just 
they need Jesus. So what if they had a shitty childhood or they were neglected or abused physically, emotionally, sexually? I mean, it's not my fucking fault that they refuse to help themselves. How about that crazy guy, you know, the one next door? He came back from fighting overseas in a war that you don't really understand. He's all fucked up too, but come on. It's not your fault he decided to sign up. He made a decision to go fight. So what if he has severe PTSD? So what if he can't work or even leave his house? He made a decision to go kill. He made it, not you. Why should you care? He just needs to get the fuck over it already. Did you hear about that girl at school? You know, the one that's always depressed and has those weird lines up and down her wrists on her thighs. She's starting to kill herself, I swear to God. She just wants attention. I mean, no wonder everyone bullies her. She just needs to stand up for herself and, and stop being so weird. What about that hot guy that everyone likes, though? I mean, secretly, we all know he beat this girl, but it's just that well, he's just so hot. It's got to be her. She must be doing something to make him hit her. All right, fine, fine. Jesus, why doesn't she just leave him already? She has kids, for God's sake. She's selfish. She should just walk away. There are these things called restraining orders. Hello? She's obviously uneducated. Wait, what do you mean she has no money? She literally controlled everything. Why would she be that stupid? To ha let him have control. Stupid horror. But you know what? Not my business. Her pain is not mine. She made her decision, not me. I'm just going to look the other way. She can deal with it on her own. I don't care that she's afraid. I don't care. Her pain is not mine. I have my own shit to deal with, okay? I don't care that she's broke with fear. I don't care that she's alone. Or that she doesn't know which way to turn. Or that, that one piece of paper isn't going to save her. Not when he's standing there holding a fucking gun to her head. While she kneels in front of them, in front of their kids. What's she supposed to do? Wave it in his face? No, what? Oh, no. There's a total restraint for her. i got to back off. Yeah, right. You might kill her next time or the time after. But her physical pain, when he beats her so bad that it's just for the ER again, that's nothing. Nothing compared to her emotional pain, her broken heart, her broken faith. What is pain? How would you define it? How would it define you? That was pain by Ryan Leslie. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ryan, for reading Pain. Again, that was Ryan Leslie reading her uh, story, Pain. We will have links to Ryan um, on shamelessplugspodcast.com. Um, and now I, Samantha the Writer, am going to read my story. This is just a um, piece of flash fiction that I wrote. So um, if you're not familiar with flash fiction, it goes by in a flash. So uh, this is my story. It's called The Encounter. The Encounter. Yesterday, I saw a girl in the stairwell of my office building who looked so much like my college friend's sister that I wanted to stop her and ask, How's Ophelia doing? But then I realized, she probably doesn't know. And that was my story, The Encounter. Uh, you can find that on my website, which is www.samanthawriter.com. Um, and... Visit us on shamelessplugspodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter. And thank you so much. Have a good one, Outlets.